Hi y'all, welcome to my shop. Perhaps you're new to wood turning and you don't know the difference between a bowl gouge and a spindle gouge. Or perhaps you've been turning a while, you're beginning getting it into bowl turning and you're thinking maybe you need another bowl gouge. If, and, and you're not sure about, about the grinds, you're not sure about the handles. If so, keep watching. Bowl gouge is designed for turning bowls, uh, obviously cross grain work where the grain is going in this direction. And, and that's because the, the bowl gouge needs a lot of strength because it's hanging off the tool rest a, a, a long ways and it needs that, that strength. The strength comes from having more steel underneath the flute. The flute is the part that's milled away. Uh, so it, it is stronger than a similar uh, size spindle gouge. This is a uh, half inch spindle gouge, this is a half inch bowl gouge, but I'll, I'll have a close up of these. But the, there's more metal that's been milled away for this spindle gouge in order to accomplish what a spindle gouge needs to do uh, versus a bowl gouge. Now, so the bowl gouge comes from having more steel underneath the bottom of the flute, but it also it's stronger because of the very high wings that give it uh, incredible strength similar to the construction of an I-beam. So bowl gouge might be more properly uh, called a deep fluted gouge because it does have a deeper flute than, than a, a, a similar size spindle gouge. So for example both of these are a half inch bar stock but the the spindle gouge has much lower shoulders. It is a much more open, open grind, and it has less steel below the flute. Whereas the bowl gouge has much more steel all the way underneath here, but also the sides go up much higher, therefore giving it that, that equivalent of that I-beam construction. Think of an I-beam, you know on its side and then we're only dealing with half of it but you know this is just a whole lot stronger than just you know a bar, bar of steel. Now bowl gouges are not only for turning bowls and spindle gouges not necessarily only uh, for uh, turning uh, spindles but there is, is some, cr some crossover. Bowl gouges don't always all have the same shape. Some folks like drive Honda, some folks drive Accords and some of it is driver's preferences. One is not may or may not necessarily be better than the other. It's whatever you 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 like. So this is an example of what we might call a parabolic, where it's fairly wide at the top and fairly open at the bottom, so it clears chips fair, fairly well. There's other designs. Let's just convert this one back into a bowl gouge that are more of a V shape that come down more like this. with fairly straight sides and depending on how tight it is at, at the bottom some of these can be uh, uh, I guess what I'm trying to trying to say with this particular design the, the V gouge, uh, some people like this there it is a little more complex in sharpening it and I can show that later in a separate video uh, but many of them have very, very much of a V similar to this. The first gouge that, that I own, which I've since gotten rid of, uh, it was a cheap, it, it was a Chinese, Chinese uh, uh, M, M2 steel, but it had a very bad design. And it, it was so tight down here, it tended to clog, clog chips. Uh, my preference is more for a parabolic shape. Uh, this is more resembles the shape of a uh, uh, Ellsworth uh, Ellsworth bowl gouge uh, parabolic shape, or a Lyle Jameson bowl gouge. But there's a lot of bowl gouges. I would say the majority of folks tend to re uh, prefer a parabolic shape than a V shape. But there are exceptions. And again, it depends on not only what you like, but but what you were taught and what your turning technique is. The third style that I didn't mention is is a much more oh, <clears throat> excuse me is a much more open uh, shallow uh, flute. 
it has the same, typically the same amount of steel here as, as its uh, parabolic uh, or, or V uh, uh, cousins, but it, it has much less steel on the side here, very open, it clears chips fairly uh, real well, it does great in a push cut, um, but you can't do a swept back grind, grind, and I'll show you that in just a moment. So that's a U or a C shape. This works great for the inside of bowls. The U or C shape also works uh, great for a bottom of the bowl gouge. That is one for where you're you're cutting cutting in that that bottom third of a bowl where you're you're getting a lot more ingrain. So th th this is a great shape for that bowl gouge where you're just cutting very at, at the bottom where maybe your other other bowl gouge be, uh, can't can't get all the way down across the bottom without bumping the handle. Let me let me illustrate. Let me see if I can illustrate <clears throat> illustrate that angle. You come in, this is about a 45 degree uh, ground uh, gouge. You come in here, you can come along the bottom without any without any problem without losing bevel support. Now let's let's change that to something slightly steeper. In this case you come in Normally you're going to enter it with a, a shallower uh, 45, 50 something that coming down the walls. But down near the bottom, with this 60 degrees, you can still come all along the bottom without the handle bumping into the wall. Whereas you, if you had to do that with a 45 degree, you're going to come along, you make your entry cut, you're going to come along fine, but once you get down near the bottom, you start bumping into the wall with a handle and you can't come all the way across the bottom and that's where the uh, another good example with that bottom feet or gouge works out well. The C or U-shaped bowl gouge is going to have a an appearance uh, that that may look quite similar to the spindle roughing gouge in that it's fairly, uh, fairly open however this is never to be used on a bowl it's not designed for the rigors of cutting cross grain and, and, and that very difficult end grain that comes around twice uh, with every revolution. It, they, they tend to have a very weak tang and as a result and, they, and with the much larger wing sticking out easier to get in trouble and this won't get you out of trouble it'll just get you in trouble if you try to use it on a bowl so just don't do it. My advice to those of y'all who are in a club or maybe multiple clubs or watch a lot of YouTube videos is don't change uh, bowl gouge grinds every time the wind blows in a different direction. As you watch these various uh, noted wood turners, world class wood turners, they can be very persuasive why their particular grind uh, or, or choice of uh, bowl gouge is, is the best. I'd say my advice to you is probably stick with a 50 or 55 degree transitional design where it's swept back no more than three quarters of an inch for a five eighths inch uh, bar stock size bowl gouge and stick with that until you master it and then only make a change when you have a reason for making a change you know why you want to make a change perhaps you've gotten some very detailed instruction from somebody attended a, a workshop then then make a change all of these different grinds and profiles have pros and cons you just got to figure out what works best for you. I'm going to cover sharpening in, in detail in a, in a future video, but the, I would say when you get a brand new bowl gouge, there's a good chance that it came from the factory with a grind that might not be suitable for you at all. Basically, they're putting a, uh, enough of a grind on it to get it out the door in most instances because they don't want to waste time and money or your steel that you're buying when they don't know exactly what kind of grind you're going to have and you might wind up changing it as soon as you, you get it. Talk about some of the differences between a quality bowl gouge and a, and a, and a cheaper bowl gouge. Uh, generally speaking, uh, all the bowl gouges you're going to get from Sheffield, England are going to be a high quality, a high quality steel because they've been making woodworking tools for, for hundreds of years. Now in more recent years, some very high quality tools been being, are being made in North America. Some of them are actually being sold in, in Europe. Uh, and I have a listing uh, shown here in alphabetical order. J. 
cheaper tools tend to come from from China and they're cheaper for a reason my advice is buy the best you can afford uh, a cheaper tool from China the there's going to be a tendency to not have the same level of quality control they're not going to have the same level of manufacturing uh, process heat treatment is a very critical issue with high-speed steel typically M2 or maybe M42 or one of the one of the more exotic uh, A10, A15, 2060, there, there are any number of, of uh, high-speed uh, steels out there. But heat treatment is critical and you're not going to get the same quality control in general for a cheaper, a cheaper one. You might get one that works fine. You might get one that just won't hold an edge at all because of poor quality heat treatment. They're frequently going to have lower quality handles. Uh, they're they're going to be maybe the handles are going to be too short uh, for what you what you need them for. Maybe the ferrules are really thin brass and ready to pop. And and typically the the flute uh, that's being milled is not going to be as polished uh, on on those cheaper ones uh, as it would be on a more expensive one. Now some of that you can rectify. Okay, let's talk about bevel angle. That is how how, how sharp uh, the, the the angle is uh, on, on your profile. You know, it, it varies. They can vary from anywhere from 40 to 70 degrees. One size does not fit all. So looking at the bevel angle, they might look something like, like this. This being a 40 degrees. One favored by Stuart Batty. This is more of what I'd call a transitional grind, and it might be somewhere closer to 50 to 55. And then you've got uh, one that might be more swept back, might be in the area of 60, uh, could even be 65 degrees. Uh, and this happens to be a little more swept back grind, but it, it could be uh, not swept back as far. The, the, this, the flute is going to be somewhere in here, it's hidden, shown by a dotted line, and along the top uh, of that, that cutting edge, it's going to be somewhat convex and slightly curved. You definitely would not want one that, that dropped it, had a little bird's, uh, bird's beak here or, uh, or was, was concave. That would not cut well at all. I took this, uh, this uh, inexpensive Benjamin Best 5 8 inch bowl gouge. I bought it years ago uh, when I was uh, early in my, my turning, turning career. And, and it, does, it does okay. I had to replace the handle, put a, a longer handle on it to get more leverage. Uh, the flute had obvious uh, mill marks on it, uh, machining marks that I had to take a piece of sandpaper, wrap it around a dowel, and just keep polishing it because if you have those mill marks, you're not going to get as sharp an edge uh, because a sharp edge is two planes coming together, and if one of them's got a serrated edge, it's not going to be as uh, as sharp. That said, you know it. This is a a bottom feeder bowl gouge. It's one I don't use a whole lot. I can get by with something uh, lesser quality because I'm too cheap to go out and buy a special purpose, high quality, $100, pay $100 for a bowl gouge that I'm only going to use maybe a few times a year. Uh, so, you can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear, but sometimes uh, cheaper ones may be adequate for you. It might not be bad if you're starting with something cheaper as you're learning how to grind and you're, you're wasting a lot of steel. That might be an excuse for, for getting a, a cheaper one, but get the best you can afford. All right, let's talk about bowl gouge size. All right, trick question. How wide is a half an inch British uh, bowl gouge? Uh, bowl gouge from Sheffield, England. If you said five eighths of an inch, you get a gold star, go to the head of the class, you probably quit watching the rest of this video. In Great Britain, or, or in England, uh, they measure based on the distance between, between the wings, or they measure the, the, the width of that flute. Uh, North America and Australia, uh, they measure the size bar stock. Uh, why do the, the uh, English do it the other way? Um, 
If you've got a good explanation, please leave it in the comments below. It doesn't make sense to me. I would say tradition. Because if, if you look at a, uh, a half-inch spindle gouge, a half-inch spindle gouge is a half-inch in Great Britain and the rest of the world. But a half-inch bowl gouge in, in England is five-eighths. Now, when it comes to the best size, the best size generally is a function of the size bowls you're turning. If you're turning on a, mi uh, a mini lathe, I would say you would not eat anything larger than a half inch bar, bar stock. Uh, somewhere for bowls up to maybe, maybe 10 inches. After that, I would certainly lean more toward uh, 5 eighths of an inch. Now, one of the reasons is the larger the bowl, it tends to be deeper and you're going to have to to hollow it out, you're going to have to hang further over the tool rest, and there are limits. You start getting into into chatter, uh, and that that will influence it. So, for example, here's a, a chart that gives you some indication, and I'm I'm using a spindle gouge uh, comparison next to a bowl gouge, but a three eight inch shaft size, the maximum reach over the tool rest is going to be an inch and a half. A half inch bowl gouge, two and a half inches. Five eighths inch bowl gouge, three and a half uh, inches. And they also have three quarter inch bowl gouges. I don't own one because I don't turn bowls that big. Don't plan on turning bowls that big. All right, let's talk about uh, bowl gouge handles. They come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, I personally, I like wood. They're comfortable. They're easy to make. They're inexpensive and frequently. Uh, especially for most of the bowl gouges made in North America, uh, you can get them unhandled and easily uh, turn a handle to, to fit you, fit your size, fit your, fit your length. Um, I'm not a big proponent of spending a lot of money for, uh, for, for handles. Um, the, the Carter & Son makes a very nice handle. Uh, I can't say that it's one of my favorites because it's rather cold to the hand. I find it just a little bit heavy and I just can't see paying $80, $90 for, for a bowl gouge handle. Now, I know if you're a uh, world class wood turner and you're flying around the country or flying around the world and weight is an issue, I can see certainly see the advantages of having a, a quick change uh, collet handle where you only take one or two, two handles with you. I don't do that. I pretty much stay in my shop, and if I'm traveling, it's generally by automobile, so it's not a big issue. I want a handle on every every tool. I don't want to be swapping out, just like I don't want to be swapping out uh, chuck jaws all the time. I'd rather have, have several uh, chuck jaws. Your mileage may vary, uh, but uh, you can spend a lot of money on handles if you, if you want to. Now, the handle length. Let's talk about handle length. You generally want a 5 to 1 ratio of the amount of tool that's hanging off against the part from the tool rest back. 5 to 1 ratio. So if you're hanging off of the, the, the tool rest uh, 3 inches, you want at least 15 inches behind and, and more is usually uh, better. I, again, of course, keep in mind that the, the longer the handle gets, it may wind up bumping your, your tail, tail stock, and that might be an issue. You might have to move the tail stock, and, it, and that could be, a, could be an issue. Many store-bought gouges come with a handle that's, that, I'm not going to pick up one, uh, with a handle that's, that's too small, and that's, that's easily, easily fixed. Uh, if you're interested in turning a tool handle, click on this video above. Here's an example of a very small, short handle, no more than 10 inches long, that I have on this 3 8 inch bowl gouge with a, uh, it's a C-shaped gouge with a very, very steep, and I find this works very well sometimes on some spindle projects, uh, such as facing off a large, large cylinder. Because the tool is never hanging you know, more than a half an inch or so off the tool rest, so this gives me plenty of, plenty of leverage. Y'all stay safe. Come on back here.